What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Character Profiles. This week we're doing Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal and we're doing Don Thousand. So first up in the English version he's known as Don Thousand. In the Japanese it's pretty much the same. His age, um, I don't really know but he's probably old right? His anime debut was in Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal episode 99, A Duel in Ruins part 1. Here are his wins and here are his losses and here's his dual score. Don Thousand is the god of the Baryan world and the central antagonist of the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal anime. He is also the ancestor of the seven Baryan emperors. The word Don in his name can translate to either the honorific of Sir or the word Talent in Spanish. Accordingly, Don Thousand might mean Sir Thousand, which would reflect his high status, or even Thousand Talents, which could reflect his powers and abilities. And interestingly enough, his name is also an imperfect palindrome in Katakana. See, if you flip it around, it's exactly the same. That's pretty cool, right? Fun fact, if you spell race car backwards, you guessed it, it spells race car. How awesome is that? I love palindromes. Don Thousand has a similar appearance to Mr. Heartland's Baryan form. Don Thousand's form consists of a demonic form with luminous inflamed eyes, shady red skin and wings. He also has a large luminous red eye at the centre of his abdomen. He has a stylized version of the Baryan emblem on his chest. The spike on his forehead seems to form some kind of structure that appears similar to that of the Emperor Ki, except like black. His wings are also covered with red diamonds, similar to Vector and the Chaos Empowered number 96. He is also the largest of the Baryans, being the size of a giant. However, Don Thousand's true form is that of a denizen of Astral World, with luminous gold hair with long red bangs in front. His skin tone is black with red outlined onyx coloured armour, with his emblem embedded at the centre. He has heterochromic eyes which are blue and red, with the addition of a third eye placed vertically on his forehead. He also wears a set of earrings on his pointed ears. Like Vector, he also has an energy form resembling his true form. Don Thousand's personality is complicated and dynamic, as he lacks the usual insanity or pride associated with usual Yu-Gi-Oh antagonists. He is characteristically malevolent and vengeful dedicated to spreading chaos and destroying the astral world no matter the cost. He is also shown to be a very direct individual, always going straight to the point and does not usually stray from the subject at hand. Don Thousand has a very commanding presence and is not above threatening Vector, though he does not show any degree of sadism in doing so, and it appears to be more out of concern for his own agenda rather than just being a dick. Upon his return to his energy form, Thousand's disposition becomes a lot more confident. A good example of this would be when he casually passed his first turn in his duel against Mizar. This is due to his confidence in his absolute power due to obtaining supremacy through stealing the powers of the Numeron Code by fusing the human world and Baryan world. As the deity of the Baryan world, Don Thousand possesses great power even in his weakened state. He can possess Baryans, grant them new abilities and even restore them should they be injured. His powers can awaken other Baryans but those who fall under his influence in the process develop a darker and more malicious disposition position, until they are reduced to mere puppets of his power. Each person who has been influenced by him contains a portion of his malice, meaning he can be multiple locations at once. Don Thousand can also absorb people into him through the item on his body, as seen when he did so with Vector. He can also fire pulse waves which can knock a person down. By having the Baryan world fused with Earth, Don Thousand became able to draw upon the power of the Numeron Code itself. With it, he is capable of destroying the astral world. So Don Thousand was once a resident of the astral world, but was exiled when the realm decided to abandon the power of chaos. In an attempt to claim the Numeron Code, Don Thousand battled Astral on a volatile earth. The battle ended when Astral performed a shining draw which seemed to destroy much of the astral world in the process. This resulted in fragments of Astral's power being scattered across the human world. They manifested in the form of the 50 numbers. Among them were also the 7 Mithrian numbers and the 4 Numeron 
Numeron Gate monsters. During his battle, the Baryon deity embedded in Astral a shard of his essence, which eventually became number 96. Don Thousand's soul became sealed beneath the sea in the Baryon world, the dimension that formed when the chaos was cast out. Seven Mithrian numbers attached themselves to heroes and sages on Earth and sealed Thousand's power. Thousand used his remaining power to journey across the earth and confront each of the heroes and sages. He corrupted their original memories by binding an over 100 number to each of their souls, causing them to be reincarnated as Baryons upon death. He would use the seven Baryon Emperors to ensure his revival and the restoration of his power. After being defeated by Yuma Tsukumo and Astral several times, Vector journeyed to the Great Baryon Sea. Swinging through it, he found the place where Don Thousand was sealed and released him. He offered Don Thousand his life in exchange for the power to defeat Yuma and Astral. Upon Vector's defeat, Thousand returned. He called Vector a fool and then proceeded to absorb him. After this, Thousand began to transform, merging with the newly created Numeron network composed of the human and Baryon world. Mizar then showed up and dueled Don Thousand, who emerged in his energy form. However, Mizar seemingly defeated himself using Dragon King's demise, without Don Thousand having to play a single card, and he was then absorbed as well. With this, Don Thousand made his final transformation into his true form. After the defeat of Mizar, Thousand revealed his true plan. Since he did not know where the Numeron code was, except that it was on Earth, he fused the Baryon world and human world together to control the Numeron code. Thousand challenged Yuma and Nash to a duel with the code, allowing Thousand to open a portal to the astral world and directly attack it when Yuma and Nash took damage. During the duel, it was also revealed that Thousand had used the Numeron network as a field spell card to manipulate Mizar's cards in the previous duel, and demonstrated this power again by effortlessly countering the summon and number 39 Utopia and replacing it with Gunbara Knight. Eventually, after Numeron network was destroyed by the efforts of Astral and Eliphas, Thousand summoned his ultimate ace monster, number IC-1000 Numeronius Numeronia. However, despite putting Yuma and Nash into a corner, he was ultimately defeated by the combined might of number 100 Numeron Dragon, Utopia, and number 73 Abyss Splash, which were united by Utopia Rising. Shortly before his destruction, Thousand transferred his numbers and remaining power to Nash before laughing and fading away. So Don Thousand uses a Numeron deck initially focused on utilising the Numeron network to activate trap cards from his deck, letting him manipulate his opponent's strategies. The deck includes the Numeron Gate Monsters, which were the first numbers to fall to Earth during his battle against the original number. The final play of the deck comes in the form of number C1000 Numeronius and its upgraded form number IC1000 Numeronius Numeronia. The effect of Numeronius can control nearly the entire duel, while the effects of Numeronia can grant an automatic win. Now that is OP. Some of the cards that were included in his deck were number one, Numeron Gate Ekam, number two, Numeron Gate D, <laughs> number three, Numeron Gate Trini, number four, Numeron Gate Katvari, number C1, Numeron Chaos Gate Sunya, and of course, number C1000, Numeronius, and number IC1000, Numeronius, Numeronia. And with that, guys, that's another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Character Profiles done. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Don't forget to head over to Twitter to vote for who you'd like to see next time for Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Catch you later.